How's it going aliens? My name is Alien today. I'm back with another identity 5 video. Today's video will be a survivor guide for the female dancer. I haven't made a survivor guide in a long, long time. A very long time. I've made a hunter guides, but not a survivor guide in a while. So why not let why not do a survivor guide? Let's get right into the video. Okay, before I get into the guide, I do want to plug my Discord server. The link will be in the pinned comment below, as well as in the description below. We are so close to a thousand members on the Discord server. I think like 20 members, 20, 30 members away. So, can you please go click the link and join the server today? Now, let's get into the guide. So, I'll go over her persona. I'll go over in a custom how you start every match and other things about her. So here are her external traits. You can pause the video if you need to see them. But basically, she has a music box. Um, it can either be a fast box or a slow box. And it, the slow boxes do not affect her. The fast boxes do affect her. The slow boxes affect everyone else besides her. The fast boxes affect everyone including her. You can also hold down the box to make the effect greater. And also the area it's covered a uh, larger area if you hold up the music box. So usually... You use slow boxes for kiting, fast boxes for decoding. In the simplest terms, fast box for decoding, slow box for kiting. Um, so yeah, she doesn't get slow by the slow box. And she also has a little kiting boost. Um, she gains 30% increased movement speed for 3 seconds when she falls from a height. So any elevation in the game it works you get a speed boost that's why she's really really good on lakeside because there's so many places in lakeside to jump off of to get that speed boost it could be tiny elevations big elevations it doesn't matter even if she's just jumping down an inch she gets that speed boost so that makes her really good in those maps and gives a nice little kiting boost to her she has no debuffs because uh, her two previous debuffs both got taken away. Her decoding speed debuff and also her interaction speed debuff when her teammates were eliminated both got taken away. So now she's just a kiting character with normal decoding speed and no debuffs and a slight buff to kiting. She's an A tier survivor. She's an S tier level kiter though. So her kiting is S tier it's as good as any other survivor if not better and she's an A tier survivor so she's really strong and really viable in rank let's go over her persona so this is the persona the best one for dancer you want to use broken windows borrow time exit path and then you want to put one into sticker and then you want to put two into will to survive and two into great power. Great power is really good on dancer because you put the slow boxes in pallets. And when the hunter destroys them, that gives you a free stun. So that makes great power such a great trait for dancer. Will to survive is just a really good trait. It comes into handy a lot of times and it can come really clutch. So will to survive and then sticker is a great trait to have at least put one into sticker so that's the build for dancer um next let me get into my favorite maps for her so dancer like most survivors she's good on every map but any maps that have elevation makes her even better so lakeside she's really good moonlit um there's places to get elevation there which are good leo's memory also elevation uh but then orange factory in red church of course do not have any elevation but she's still good in those maps uh it's just that she cannot take advantage of her external trait in those maps
Now I'm going to get into a bot match and basically show how you start with dancer. So what a dancer should do from the start and then I'll end it with some gameplay of me playing dancer in top tiers in the legendary rank match. Also this is how default dancer looks. So there's two different two different playstyles for dancer. You can have more of a, an aggressive playstyle or a conservative playstyle. This spawn is usually bad for anyone else. However, Dancer can take this spawn, but you have to make sure to... Oh, I messed that up. But you put in the pallet. So Dancer can actually take this spawn. Now he's following me. But you want to put them in the... Hold it like this and put them in the pallet and then a hunter will come to the you can loop what you want to do is you just loop here the hunter if you do your job as you'll see in the gameplay a hunter will, cannot hit you if he's in a slow box like this so you would just loop and then eventually he has to break it and when he goes to break it let's say he's going to break it then you stun and you use great power plus that to take the time to transition and now you're over here you can take the speed boost and you just got so much space from the hunter so usually that's the conservative place out wherever you find your cipher at so if this is your cipher you immediately put one soul box at the pallet hold it like this and then you decode and then if the hunter comes to you you retreat back to your slow box and you can loop here but you can also be, if you don't want to waste your slow boxes, then you don't put them when you decode. So you just wait till you get that fear radius. And once you get the heartbeat, you can then put it there so that you aren't wasting your box. But at the same time, that's more risky and that can go wrong. Because Dancer's biggest weakness is when she's kiting, but when she's caught off guard. So Dancer is a great kiter when she has the time to set herself up. So when you have the time to set up your slow boxes, she's an amazing kiter. But if she just gets caught off guard and you didn't have your box up, that's when it takes too long to put down your box that a hunter can probably hit you in that time. So that's where her weakness comes. Whereas someone like Perfumer, you get snuck up on. Wu Chang teleports, you just perfume the hit. Perfumer's great for that. But if you didn't have your slow box here, right? And Wu Chang teleports, he has a free hit on you. But let's say you were more conservative and you put down your box, now you can probably get to the pallet. So that just shows you the difference between the two play styles. But if he doesn't come to you, then this box is just gone. It's just wasted basically because you're going to go to your next cypher so unless you can when you kite you do want to try and kite back to where you put your slow boxes if you put them down beforehand so then you can actually not let them go to waste but mainly this is a waste of a box but at the same time it's playing it safer and i recommend against a clown if you know it's a clown if you see the parts just put the box in the pallet um you do that if it's a clown if it's a wu chang if it's a dream witch then you want to do it everyone else you can decide what you want to do so you can decide whether to be more conservative or just you really don't want to waste your boxes usually i don't put them down because i'm greedy but that also can come back to bite me because i've died many times because I was too greedy, greedy with my boxes. And because of that. the I couldn't put them down in time. When if I already had them down. 
I would have been just fine. So that's how you want to start off the answer you go to your cipher. Those are the two play styles to user. Now let me just show you gameplay. So this is a pretty good match that I recorded the other day of me using her in rank and it shows really what I try to do. So I get the spawn in Leo's memory. I don't immediately put my box because I don't want to waste it. So I'm just decoding. The Ripper sees Merc, he's going to leave the mercenary. Then I get the heartbeat, and as soon as I get the heartbeat, I hold it, and then I put it down. I put it in the pallet. Now I'm just going to loop here. It's m pretty easy to dodge his blade in the slow box. I do not go for that stun. Don't. I had, because he's breaking the box, that gives me time to transition alone. I don't need to go for the stun when I may have not made it and that gives them a free hit. So I'm just going to loop around this. Dodge the blade. It's easy to dodge Ripper's blades in the slow box. And now loop. Now he goes to break the box. Stun him. Longer stun because I have that slow box also in there. Now I'm just gonna put down that pallet because that slow box is not was not held up, so it has a much lesser effect. I should have dodged that blade, but I messed up. But the reason I just put that pallet is because that has a much lesser effect. So at that point, the Ripper can probably get hit off on that slow box. So just put the pallet down and then transition at that point. He missed the blade right there. So now dancers without any slow boxes. So I don't have anything to kite with. So now it's just raw kiting. Nothing to help me. I knew he was holding his attack. So I didn't put that pallet down or else I would have got hit through the pallet. So three ciphers remaining. Really two. Merc's done. Enchantress halfway, max halfway. So that's a winnable kite, a hundred percent. And after this gameplay, I'm going to finish it off by just getting into the hunters that counter dancer and what team comps dancer is best in. So Merc's coming for the rescue. He gets in before half. And they said the Cypher's prime, so I took the hit on purpose so that I could get the broken the knee-jerk reflex speed boost of vaulting the pallet with the speed boost of borrow time. So now I was able to get into a better kiting spot now. I threw the pallet because I knew he was going to go for that blade. So me throwing the pallet put me in a position to dodge the blade. Take the speed boost and just transition. Right now I'm just kiting for fun. I'm seeing if I can make it to the exit gate because I do not know where the dungeon is right now. So I'm just kiting for fun, seeing if I can make it to the gate.
And the dungeon's actually right there, but I do not see it at first. So you can see I'm still kiting. And then I see the ripper not move. Like, what is he doing? And then I see that the dungeon's there. And I get dungeon. And that's a four-man escape. 182nd kite, I believe. 162nd kite, I think. Um, to dungeon. Good early game. That's how you want to start off your early game. Ripper is a difficult hunter to kite. I'm sure many people have difficulties kiting Ripper. But Dancer is actually pretty good against him. She, she does a good job with the slow boxes. And then at the end, you just have to be skilled at kiting without the boxes. So let's get into her counters. Dancer, the hunter she mainly counters is she does a great job against dream witch and any other hunter so any other hunter so helember gamekeeper photographer mad eye so all these um hunters that don't have anything to help them she destroys feaster those types of hunters she does a good job against axe boy but you have to watch out for the fireballs now the hunters that you most people will have difficulty kiting is Ripper, Soul Weaver, Smiley, and Geisha. Against them, she does a good job against Ripper. But if you get caught off guard against a Ripper and you didn't have your box out, then she can get destroyed because unlike Perfumer, she can't cover up for your mistake. So if you get caught off guard by a Ripper, then you can get down very quickly because you won't have time to put down your slow boxes. So she does a great job against him, but she's not like a hard counter to him. He can kill her. Soul Weaver, they counter each other. Soul Weaver speed counters her slow boxes, but at the same time, because they're slow boxes, if she didn't have slow boxes, Soul Weaver would easily catch up to her. But now it's like Soul Weaver's normal speed. So it's not that they counter each other basically. Because Soul Weaver can go really fast in your boxes. You have to watch out for that. A Soul Weaver can stack three webs and she'll go really fast in your slow box. And it will be a surprise. But so they counter each other. But she does a good job against Soul Weaver. Smiley, she destroys Smiley face. All you have to do is just put your box, put your slow box in the pallet at the start of the game. And once he does his opening dash, if he comes to you, just put down another slow box. You don't have to hold this one up. Just put it down once you get that terror radius. And then he's, it's so hard to control your dash when you're that slow that he's going to crash at that point. And you can throw your pallet quickly. So she does a really good job against Smiley. She basically counters him. She counters his early game. His opening dash for sure. And Geisha. She does a great job against Geisha as well. But Geisha is similar to Ripper. If you get caught off guard by the Geisha. Then you're going to get killed quickly. Because Geisha will not give you enough time to put down your boxes. But if your boxes were already out in time then you're going to destroy that geisha so she's really an s tier kiter and she can kite any hunter in the game and she does a great job at kiting every single hunter it's just about whether you had your boxes out or you didn't how quick you were to recover um and dancer is also a great recovery kiter so if she gets hit early she can still recover that kite and make a 60 second kite a 60 to 70 second kite whereas someone like perfumer if you get hit early and you didn't perfume that your perfumes power becomes so less useful now that you're one hit that she really gets weakened at that state but then you have people like magician who does a great job as well if he gets hit early so dancers similar to those kiters to where she does a great job even if she gets hit early because her slow boxes still have the same effect fully healthy or one hit um fast boxes so you want to use your fast boxes 
at the end of the game so if there's a cipher that needs to be rushed down that's when you want to use your fast boxes never use them early game for decoding you only use them in game for decoding accelerate decodings on and you need to finish this cipher in time to pop it for borrow time that's when you want to use your fast box it comes into handy a lot it's a great little bonus about dancer if you didn't get chased and you have your fast boxes it can really come into handy. So fast boxes are useful. You also want to use them at the gate to open the exit gate faster. The best team compositions for Dancer is, right now the best team composition is Double Rescue, Coordinator, Mercenary, Mech, Seer is the perfect team comp. But Mech or Seer gets banned. So let's say it's a Mech ban, which is most likely, so now it's Seer, Chord, Merc, you put Dancer in. So usually you would put Perfumer in, Perfumer Seer, or you can put Enchantress or Prospector or Magician. You're just putting Dancer in instead. So Dancer just fills into those team comps. It can be, if you aren't doing Double Rescue, it can be Mercenary, Seer, Perfumer, Dancer, Triple Kiter, and mercenary so she just fills in into any kiting team comp she just fills in as a kiter instead of perfumer enchantress prospector magician acrobat those survivors but i think that's pretty much all for the guide for dancer i hope you learned something from the guide and if you did learn something and you enjoyed the guide please give this video a like and if you want to see more guides like this in the future or anything else identity 5 related please subscribe to the channel and that'll be all for the video bye